Welcome back to the show. Joining us now to talk sex and relationships is sexologist Dr. Limor Blockman. Hey, Limor. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you. So we're going to be focusing on men today. Yes, of course. As always, we always focus on them at the end. <laughs> right? We can't help it. So male libido, you know, um, uh, sexual arousal disorder. It's mm -hmm. something that we're, we're not comfortable talking about, but men are not always ready and, and happening, you know, to have sex. And that's a problem that a lot of men are dealing with and a lot of women are dealing with as partners. As partners, yeah. Yeah. So what they did, they took 38 men and exposed them to, versus a control group, mm -hmm. and exposed them to a light in the in the uh, strength of 10,000 lux. This is the, the, the measurement, which mm -hmm. applies to, if you look at just a sunny day, it can amount to 100,000. Wow. So they left them, you know, sitting in front of this uh, projector for uh, a few days, and then they uh, they examined what was the uh, what was the result of it after two weeks of being exposed, and they found that three times more libido was you know prevalent when in these men they were just experiencing more uh, sex drive mm -hmm. and they were functional much better, and this worked for them. And the, the truth is actually that if you look at what this light is doing, if we're exposed to sunlight or something that is similar that imitates sunlight, mm -hmm. we're actually uh, increasing the luteinizing hormone and that increases the production of testosterone. That's so interesting. So it's almost yeah. like a link to seasonal depression that Absolutely. some people have in countries where there's not that much sun That is exactly true. Wow. Yeah. Huh. So these men are suffering unknowing <laughs> <laughs> what's going on with them. Are we going to see then, women, you know, shining flashlights into yeah, their Yeah, you know, just projecting the, the guys time. trying to sleep and you're like, what are you doing to me? Yeah. So this so worked for them. But if, if the, the source of everything is, is uh, testosterone, so there are ways to actually help these men to produce more. Hmm. So first of all, losing weight around uh, your abs. If you if you absorb some a few um, pounds, yeah. it can amount to I don't know ten pounds more. It can amount to the aging and decreasing testosterone about for about similar to about four to five years. Hmm. So you, you kind of age without even knowing in terms of produ producing testosterone. The second thing is building your biceps. If you lift some weights and not excessively, I want to say, I said it before, <laughs> not excessively. If you, if you lift some weights, it will help you produce more testosterone, do it, you know, moderately, not, not going crazy, yeah, and not, get, you know, get spending. those muscle juices flowing. Yeah, no, no, yeah, just do that, but don't go crazy and don't, you okay. know, inject yourself with anything. Uh, fill up on fat. People think that if you, they, they uh, avoid any fat, this helps their functionality. It's not true at all. Mm. If, you, uh, if you consume fat, like from nuts and, you know, specific. It can be a great source of energy. It's absolutely amazing, and it helps you produce more testosterone. This is there's a link between these two. Another thing that can help you is to push away from stress. Absolutely, if you are stressed, there's there's uh, there's a surge in cortisol, and and your testosterone plummets. Mm -hmm. Everything goes awry. It's not a good thing. And of course, stay away from the bar. Uh, men that were spending I don't know three weeks of drinking moderately, even you know repeatedly every day. Uh, there was a decrease uh, in close to 30% in their testosterone production. Oh, so you have to be aware of these things. You can drink, you know, one or two drinks at twice a week and, yeah. you know, to keep it on a low scale yeah. as much so as sounds, you can. It sounds like adopting more of a healthy lifestyle. Yeah, generally. absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. But we're looking at these women and we're saying, okay, while he's trying to produce more, while you're projecting him and trying to produce more testosterone, what do you do as a partner? It's very difficult to deal with the fact that your husband is not interested in sex. Mm -hmm. And it's a very big deal for a lot of women. Yeah. Most women will not even talk about it which is a problem that is unspoken about, and that, that makes it an even bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So first of all, don't take it personally. I know it's a terrible advice to begin with because you have to. Yeah, how can you, you not have to, almost? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you have to take into consideration that it has to do maybe with something physical, maybe it's something emotional that he's going through, medication, other things, and not necessarily has to do with you. I do understand that it's hard to deal with it, but you know, do something different. Yeah. Take a break for a while, take a no sex trial, and I'm not saying as a punishment, but try to build up something that removes your expectation Anything. and then creates a thirst in him. Anything that helps. Well, you always yeah. have such good advice. Thanks Thank so much, Lee Moore, for this. Thank you. And the French startup, Mr. B&B, &B, just raised $8.5 million to develop its platform, exclusively catering to the LGBTQ community. It was inspired after the founder had a bad experience with the host on popular site Airbnb when he was traveling with his partner. With Mr. B&B, hosts and guests are all on the same page and the service even takes into mind gay-friendly areas of cities around the world. And now let's have a look at some more stories making headlines around the world.
the first vehicle that can be operated both on the roads and in the air. Czech pilot Pavel Brzezina created the gyrodrive, which needs less than 100 meters to take off and can reach a top flying speed of 112 miles per hour. On the roads, the gyrodrive can hit a high of only 25 miles per hour. A one-armed New Zealand tennis player is looking to make it to the top, thanks to a carbon fire prosthetic that replaced his left arm. Alex Hunt is making waves due to his strong showings in Asian tournaments. Hunt is also inspiring others in the process. A wheelchair for disabled dogs has been created at an animal shelter in southern Taiwan. The material costs for the wheelchair are less than one-third of the price of those sold commercially. Thanks to the wheelchair, more disabled dogs can now play fetch. A marine conservation group saved an injured loggerhead turtle to mark World Turtle Day. The turtle was discovered off the coast of Liberia by a team on a trip to crack down on illegal fishing. The turtle, named Stella, is now recovering at a wildlife sanctuary in Monrovia. The Custard Pie Throwing World Championship celebrated its 50th anniversary. The competition brought together teams from Britain, France, Japan, and Finland and involved competitors throwing five paper plates of custard pie at opponents with their left hands. The organizers were careful not to waste too much food. So we are the winners. Fantastic. And documentary filmmaker and liberal activist Michael Moore has launched a website called Trumpaleaks to allow whistleblowers to securely leak information to him about U.S. President Donald Trump and his administration. Trumpaleaks was announced one day after the U.S. Department of Justice said that a 25-year-old U.S. intelligence contractor had been arrested and charged with leaking classified material. Coming up next, tech expert Hilla Foulds is in studio to tell us about Apple's newest products and features. But first, the news.